Good morning, Max Lowe. Welcome on VH Berries. Morning. Great to be here. How are you doing these days? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, it's been a busy summer, but uh, excited for the fall. Got some more projects that are coming down the line. And uh, my next big project that I have been working on for the next while is, is fixing to come out here this fall as well. So I am very grateful. Of course, you have a lot of upcoming projects coming very soon. But first, I was absorbed when I was watching one of your documentary uh, called Adventure, Not War. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the projects that for me is is probably the most impactful as as a as a director and as an artist to have worked on. Um, it was a pretty special experience in making that film. For this very special project, you worked with uh, Mac Fisher and Lindsay Hagen. Can you tell us a little bit more about the process behind this very special trip uh, into Iraq? Uh, the process on the production side? Absolutely. Um, well, I, I met the central character, Stacy, um, just through mutual friends in the outdoor industry. And the idea was really his to go back to Iraq and um, go and ski this peak and buy it, have this kind of experience of reconciliation that they all took away um, as our characters. But uh on the side of making things happen um getting the resources and the backing from some brands to pay for our whole trip to happen and the production to go forth um you know i've partnered with Lindsay and stepped productions to uh basically take this idea and turn it into a pitch and bring it to some outdoor brands a uh, handful of different outdoor brands um that ended up actually making the whole trip happen. Um, and Mac uh, came along and, and came onto the project as the DP, um, which is, as you know, a, a major part of making any any film the magical thing that it turns out to be. So, so this story evolves around, as you mentioned, uh, one particular Uh, characters can you tell us about the stories because you are doing an activity that is very special in the mountains which is skiing yeah um <laughs> well we we uh you know we, we wanted to go ski in a rock i mean that was kind of stacy's main objective you know he had heard about the mountains there when he was deployed as a soldier for the U.S. military uh, during the war in Iraq and he had never got to see them. They were always deployed in these kind of desert regions where there was not snow and it didn't really seem like a place where you could enjoy yourself or go on vacation or have fun. Um, you know, it was a place where you were fraught with fear and, um, you know, the people that they were interacting with Um, it wasn't, it wasn't the sort of interaction that, that you want to a have for yourself in a place where you're a visitor uh, and B, uh, leave upon the people that, that you're coming and impressing yourself upon. So, uh, he really wanted to go back and have this positive experience as a skier, um, himself, he wanted to go back to Iraq and experience this place in a positive way, not only for himself, but also um, as far as making an impression and bringing something that he loves to this place that he uh, he experienced as a soldier. So um, as a skier myself, I could definitely recognize that passion in him and that desire. And um, yeah, so I... I signed on kind of from the get go and helped him take this idea and craft it into something that, you know, I thought could potentially become a story. I, I hadn't totally fleshed out the, the, uh, the, the potential for a longer piece, like what adventure not war ended up becoming at that point. But, um, I mean, that's kind of how a lot of documentary projects end up going. You know, you, 
you have an idea, you see value in the idea and you do enough development on the front end to kind of realize the potential there, but um, the body of the story doesn't really come to pass until you're actually out in the field capturing uh, imagery and working with your characters to really delve into the things that they're that they're processing and experiencing. So, absolutely, because in order to complete this work, you have to be, of course, very comfortable on the snow. Because in addition to uh, skiing, you have to be able to record with your camera to have the right focus, the right angle. So you have to be multitasking. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's a hat trick for sure. And I'm lucky that I grew up in the mountains and um, spent a lot of time on the snow and in these sort of environments where, you know, your nerves are on edge and your life is on uh, the line. You know, if you fall off of a mountain, you can get seriously injured or killed. And um, thinking about that is one thing, but thinking about also being there with the camera equipment being safe first, uh, but then also having that secondary objective of capturing the story as you go. Um, it's definitely a double-edged sword. And when the whole team uh, was on the top of this very special mountain, I really love one of the quotes. What is above knows what is below, but what is below, uh, below does not know what is above. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was all Stacy, but it definitely rings true, you know, and I think that that, you know, whether it's climbing a physical mountain or, you know, pushing yourself to, to somewhere that you've never been before in whatever field you might be pursuing, like, that is one of the main drivers in human curiosity. Um, and our constant search for advanced potential within ourselves. Max Lowe, your story could be named How to Make It in Montana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a nice place. And that's it's kind of my uh driving desire to to make that story happen. <laughs> I probably would have had a whole different career track if I had moved to Los Angeles or New York, but um, I love the life that I have here in Montana. I love the access I have to the things that I uh, find value in, being in the outdoors, being able to do things like skiing and uh, backpacking and hiking and fishing. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been lucky to be able to make it work up until this point. And, you know, the life of a freelancer, you never know what's around the corner. So I hope that I can continue to make it work and continue to tell that story. But we're here today, at least. At least. And Montana is this um, Western state defined uh, by its diverse terrain, uh, ranging from the rocky uh, mountains to the uh, great plains. Yep. Yeah, it's a super diverse state with pretty much any environment you could imagine, um, rivers, lakes, uh, you know, an uncountable number of mountain ranges, um, just off, off hand and, uh, yeah, just an incredible potential, not only for personal exploration and adventure, but also as a storyteller, there's just a, a huge breadth of of characters and stories to be explored here in the state uh, with people doing all sorts of different things with their lives. For sure. And I would love to know more about your beginning uh, that started in 2012 at a newspapers and a magazine called National Geographics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the real start was probably when my mom, who was a photographer, um, you know, throughout her life, she gifted me a camera when we were going off on these family trips together. My, my father was a professional mountaineer and my mom was an artist. So, um, 
they both had these lives where they could kind of define their own schedule by the whims of what they wanted to do outside of their work. So as a family, we got to travel a lot when I was quite young. And um, my mom gave me a camera and that kind of became this way that I could interpret uh, the experiences and travels that we were uh, having um, by my own accord and kind of put this unique angle on them. Um, and I took that into high school, studied photography, took a few classes, uh, was in the high school newspaper and, you know, it was something that I was very interested in and really enjoyed. But, uh, even through college, I never really thought that I could ever make it into a career or do it as a full-time job. Um, you know, I worked for a handful of publications and just, uh, kind of set goals for myself as, uh, as a photographer to just keep shooting because it was something that, you know, I found so much joy in and led me to so many different places that I never would have found otherwise, um, that, uh, you know, I wanted to hone that. I wanted to sharpen that, that talent and, and see where else it could take me. Um, and so when I graduated from college and was faced with this decision of whether or not I wanted to try and get a real job and go work for a, a company and use this business degree that I had just gotten from university. Um, you know, I faced this decision of whether or not to take this real job or s kind of stay in, in this lane that I had found with photography and just continue to see where it might take me. And, um, that following year after I graduated college, you know, I continued to work on handfuls of stories that, you know, were things that I was just doing on my own time that I thought were, uh, of note and story worthy and, um, ended up going to this, uh, seminar, um, put on by National Geographic at the university here in, in Bozeman where, where I live. And, um, learning about this grant program for, uh, for young people. It was called the Young Explorers Grant back then. Um, the current iteration is called the Emerging Career Grant, I believe. Um, but it's offered to people under the age of 26. And um, I applied for this, you know, with very little expectation that I would ever get the grant. And, um, you know, working for National Geographic seemed like something that was totally unachievable. But you know, I, I thought, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's a chance it's, it's worth at least trying and just putting my name in the hat to see, you know, if maybe it, maybe it gets pulled out. And, uh, yeah, I ended up getting this grant, um, while I was traveling the following spring in India with some friends and, um, went to work on this project in Nepal for National Geographic, uh, under this grant. And, um, ended up meeting lots of folks there that would help shape my career to this very day. Um, yeah, it was, it was a amazing opportunity and one that I look back on and one of those, one of those moments where, you know, and, I, and I think we all experience them on a pretty regular basis where there's this chance, this, this door that you see, and it seems like just a, infinitesimally small chance that you would be able to ever achieve this thing, this dream of yours. Um, you know, we, we struggle, I think as human beings to see our own potential and recognize the fact that we might be able to do something that we think is totally out of our reach. Um, but if you just, if you, if you put your name in the hat, you know, that's all you need to do. And if you do it enough times, uh, and with the right intention and tact, um, you, know, you can achieve things that you never thought possible for yourself. And talking about hats, every single year, you are having more hats in the photography industry, but also, and right now, in the filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I definitely started more in still photography. That was where I kind of found my passion in, in storytelling and I still to this day love um, shooting still photography. You know, it, for me, there's just a flow state you find when you're in a situation and you can see images and capture them. And, you know, that's kind of the extent of what the work is. But um, 
and filmmaking, I found this much more in-depth way by which to engage with the world around me and uh, the experiences that I'm having personally, as well as the characters that I meet along the way. Um, with film, you you have this tool by which to just tell the most incredible and impactful stories, I think. Uh, not to say that a single image can't do the same thing, but um, you know, I, I don't claim to be an amazing photographer. I, I really enjoy it, but I think that there's a lot more talented photographers out there in the world. But in film, <laughs> I, in film, I found this uh, this different tool by which I could dig into stories in a in a much more intimate sense. And um, you know, f- my I think that one of my superpowers is uh, an ability to relate with people and film became this amazing tool for me to be able to do that on a much deeper level um, and experience these worlds that other people know on an entirely different scale than I do um, in this in this very broad and in-depth sense. A super uh, power uh and a super powerful asset that you have that is coming very soon <laughs> is a very powerful documentary that is going to come out this fall. Uh, actually, uh, that is going to premiere um, next week in Colorado. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My first uh, feature documentary film, um, exploring my own story, actually, uh, exploring the death of my father, who is a mountaineer. Um, and how he lived his life, how he balanced his love for the thing that he did for himself, which was climbing and the love that he had for our family. Um, and then exploring how each of my family members balanced that and were affected by his death, uh, on their own accord. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, as far as projects go above and beyond the the biggest thing that I have ever done and may ever do um, just because of the personal nature of the story and the personal gravity of sharing it with the world uh, and asking my family members to step up and share it with me so your father's name was uh, Stewart Alexander Uh, low and as you mentioned this is going to be your first uh, feature documentary uh, film can you remind us who was your father yeah my my father alex um he was uh born in montana so similar to me grew up here in the mountains and the forests and on the lakes and rivers that You know, I, I get to live on today. And uh, yeah, he found this passion for climbing when he was quite young, similar to me with photography uh, and pursued it all the way until it became a career for him. Um, and, you know, by the time he was my age, he had already had myself and my second youngest brother, Sam, with my mom. You know, he where I am in my career and where he was in his climbing career at my age are actually very similar, um, except he had chosen to take this path of having a family as well. Um, and so that is kind of where the conflict in the story comes into play, like figuring out where that balance point is and doing the things that we need to do for ourselves to find self-fulfillment and value in our own lives uh, almost in a selfish sense you know this this selfish love for needing to needing to find meaning for yourself and then also you know if you choose to have a life partner a wife or a husband that you share that that drive to you know, continue your passion with, um, you share that space with them, you know, it, it's a challenge. And when you have kids, it just doubles that challenge. Um, 
because you end up having to give part of yourself to those people. Um, and that's, and that's a tough thing for, for a lot of people to reconcile with. I think, uh, for a lot of people it, it's not, but, um, I feel like that's one of, that's one of the great human, uh, things that we all struggle with in one way, shape or form. I assume that during this process of creating and crafting uh, this piece of art, you um, took some testimony from members of your family. Were you the one, the one behind the camera uh, when you were filming this part? Because this is pretty tough. Yeah, no, I was behind the camera. Um, and that's, that's kind of baked into the to the bones of how the piece um, is presented to the audience. You know, as, as you watch the film, you experience um, these interviews and, and interactions with my family members and the other people that we interview for the piece uh, through my eyes. You know, I'm the one asking all the questions and I'm the one directing these interviews and um, You know, you see me experiencing things uh, as the filmmaker, but also as someone who's involved in the story uh, on a personal level. And I'm very curious because after next week, um, when will this feature will be available to the public eyes? <laughs> yeah, it um, premieres uh, next week, uh, first week of September at Telluride Film Festival, and then um, we'll be screening it through the fall uh, limited theatrical release uh, and a handful of other festivals, and then it will be uh, available in uh, early spring next year um, for the public. I have a great intuition, Max Lowe, and I believe that maybe it will catch the eyes of some um, companies and maybe that it will be broadcast on some uh, great platforms. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, that's one of the things about art, whether it's photography or film or anything else, you know, you, you put yourself into it and um, then you just hand it to the world and see what people think you know um it's scary you know, it, i feel like i'm right on this edge where uh, i've created this this uh thing that holds a part of myself in it and now we'll see what the world has to say uh, and my hope is that people see something within themselves when they watch it you know I think that that is the power of intimacy and vulnerability in storytelling. Um, you know, irregardless of the subject matter, you know, when you break something down to the human elements within it, uh, I think that there's potential to allow people to see, see something within themselves that maybe they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So... This is very true, Max Lowe, because when you enjoy and you love something in someone or a subject, uh, this means that this is also part of you. For example, when uh, whether it's your documentary in Iraq or the one uh, called Bare Existence in Canada, these are values that are close to me. For example, this idea of, uh, of love, of dialogue and of... Um, respecting the nature for example yeah totally yeah i mean um and i think that that's the power in examining anything through a human perspective whether it's our trip to iraq with stacy and griff and robin you know exploring this this adventure and experience through it, their eyes makes it more palatable and more powerful to the viewer uh, or bare existence where you see the plight of polar bears in the face of climate change through the eyes of these scientists who experience it uh, on this intimate um, level that no one else, you know, has the perspective or ability to see. Um, you know, you, you can bring people into worlds just as I was brought into worlds by photography when I first started out. 
in it. You know, it gives you this door into alternate perspectives that, you know, we just aren't really able to grasp uh, you know, by by our own volition because it's hard to step out of your own life and your own world in that way, at least. And I also found that you are having more fun by bouncing between uh, motions, pictures, and still imagery, which is a great uh, balance to have uh, in the life of an artist and uh, photographer, for example. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's it's super fun. It's, I mean, it's a lot of work um, <laughs> getting these projects off the ground and convincing people that it's worth investing the resources to allow you to go off and do these trips and have these experiences to tell these stories. Um, but it, it personally, it brings me a lot of enjoyment and, um, you know, that perspective, um, that I gain seeing the world through other people's eyes just continues to be the most magical and valuable thing that I've ever been able to tap into. Um, And so, you know, as a person, I, you know, I think in general, you, f you want to feel like you're giving something back to the world. You know, you are gifted this amazing uh, blessing with life and, and you know, especially um, those of us who are lucky enough to have the resources enough to travel around the world and, and, and see, see it from see it through the eyes of, of people who live live life in different ways and um i i feel um beholden to share those experiences for sure and and feel really lucky that i've been been able to gain the platform to to talk about some of these things that i think are important I'm wishing you the very best for your documentary covering uh, Stewart Alexander. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Max Lowe. Yeah, thank you.